Now, the group that you helped to found was uh, Independent Precinct Organization, IPO. Right. There already was the independent voters of Illinois. What, why were two groups needed? Well, Give us a, <coughs> remind us about the history, because they eventually merged. We eventually merged a decade later. Um, essentially, IBI at the time, which is 67, 68, 69, um, IVI was not quite the cocktail liberals, but they were not working precincts. They were not really, um, you know, they would, they would endorse candidates and their endorsements were usually fine, mm -hmm. but they weren't really building a base that could, over, could beat the machine on the ground and in individual. I mean, on the north side of Chicago, we had never elected an independent. Um, some Republicans, like Art Telser, had been elected and a few others, Elroy Sanquist, uh, but there'd never been a true independent elected mm -hmm. in either the Democratic or the Republican Party, and certainly no one like a Bill Singer who ran as an independent and was separate from the parties in terms of his election. Um, so it was not strong enough, and based on the McCarthy campaign experience, where we had mobilized and we had worked precincts and we um, were uh, very upset, obviously, by the outcome of the 68 convention and the daily operations. So we needed something more and trying to reform IVI from inside didn't seem like it was gonna be worthwhile. I was a member of IVI, a number of the other people were, but um, it wasn't, in our view, it wasn't enough. So we decided it was better to build another organization. And um, then we were copied uh, by groups in the Latino community, groups on the west side of Chicago. And our way of doing things sort of became dominant, but it couldn't last forever uh, because of the vast time and money commit, time commitment mostly. Um, so eventually when we could no longer, and I was no longer an officer of course, but by 79, um, we just didn't have the, the commitment to be able to keep doing it after a decade mm -hmm. on the way we had, and we went back to the IVI structure, which is more of a board structure. In turn, uh, they changed their, uh, we, we had emerged uh, bylaws, and they adopted many of the methods of open hearings to vote on candidates and so forth uh, that we had had, but the board method uh, requires less, demands less of the membership and still keeps the organization alive. And IVI has existed since the 1940s. It waxes and wanes. It would be nice if it were stronger. Uh, and IPO did reinvigorate it and it did bring a number of the leaders, uh, IVI leaders today, still frequently either come from IPO or they come from Hyde Park which follows more the IPO method than the way IVI is in most districts. And by the IPO method, you mean more participatory, more, more grassroots? More participatory, more uh, real work at the grassroots. The I IPO also had the ideal, and it did work for a while, that we would work on community issues between elections. So um, we might work uh, fighting urban renewal, or you know, today it would be things like affordable housing, uh, we would pick up the issues of the community and use the same campaign methods we used in an election. And that's necessary because there are periods where you go a year or two without an election. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we break here? Yeah. I think that this is Gary Johnson again, July 13, 2009, second tape for the interview. Uh, and again, could I have you state your name for the record? Uh, Dick Simpson. Um, I thought I would run through the transitions, uh, beginning with the late Mayor Daly's uh, death, and then the other times when you served on transitions teams and, and elections. But tell, tell us about uh, what happened at the time of the death of the late Mayor Daly. I find that transition uh, particularly illuminating and, um, and interesting. Obviously, he was a major figure. Uh, he had been ill. He had had to take time off uh, to go to Michigan and not be here. People had chaired the council and people had run the government in his absence. 
but he finally uh, died in 1976. And, um, you know, as soon as it was known about his death, um, the aldermen began to caucus with each other because for the rules of, at the time, and the rules have changed a couple of times, but they're still rather similar. Uh, upon the death of a mayor, he can only be replaced by a member of the city council. Uh, you can have a, a president pro tem chair of the meeting, but to have an acting, a true acting mayor or whatever title, uh, it is by vote of the city council. And it can only be one of their members. So even if uh, there's some giant in the city that seems like a perfect, you know, person, uh, you can't make the mayor at the council meeting. The law, state law, is very clear on it. So uh, one of 50 people was going to be the next mayor. And, um, you know, one, there'd be various ways one might think you would go about deciding that. So even as there are things like the wake, which I didn't attend, I attended the funeral with the official city council delegation. But every time two or three aldermen got together, obviously the discussion is, well, who's going to be the next mayor? And the easier way to do that is to, of course, break into caucuses and see where you're getting. Um, and what was, we tried one um, sort of reform caucus, essentially the people in the coffee rebellion and the independence, which is a pretty good <coughs> number of the city council when you add them all together, had a meeting at city hall and um, I and my fellow independents suggested, well, this is a wonderful time to change the rules of the city council. Whoever's going to be mayor, let's not have the mayor be dictatorial like Mayor Richard J. Daley was. Let's have rules that empower the council. Uh, and of course, we had already uh, proposed a lot of reform rules each time the, count the council adopts rules right after it's sworn in. Uh, so in 71 and 75, we had proposed reforms, and then in between we had, so we already had prepackaged, um, let's make it more possible to get things to the floor for discussion, um, and so on and so forth. A list of, they're all in the record, 10 or 20 different sets of reforms, all of which would be beneficial, most of which still haven't been adopted. Um, and Ed Burke was there, um, Chris Cohen was there, all the independent aldermen were, uh, it didn't go anywhere because the Coffee Rebellion people weren't most concerned about that in truth. They were more concerned about who was going to be mayor. But the way it worked is that the entire council broke into caucuses, and the caucuses were racial and ethnically based. So the question is, well, what are the Poles going, the Polish going to get out of this? Um, and Roman Paczynski, who probably only had his own vote to support him, said, well, I should be elected, Roman Paczynski, I should be elected mayor because I represent the Polish community. I've been congressman, blah, blah, blah. And the Irish, well, the Irish didn't really quite caucus, but the Poles did. For the first time, I think, in the history of the city of Chicago, there was a Jewish caucus, which meant mm -hmm. that people like um, Seymour Simon. Seymour Simon, Marty Overman, Singer was gone from the council by then, but the Jewish alderman whether they were machine or reform, mm -hmm. got together. Um, nothing came of that, but they did get together. Uh, but the blacks met the, um, almost, the, of, I think the evening after Daly died, uh, they met on the south side um, and rallied around Wilson, for the most part, around Wilson Frost, who was president pro tem at the time. Um, and Wilson Frost was saying, well, look, we've had white mayors since 1833. We've got now 40% of the population. We've never had a black mayor. I was president pro tem. I was chosen by the mayor. I should be at least the acting mayor. Um, and I am already the acting mayor in the interim because I'm president pro tem. I'm the one who was chosen, or maybe it was vice mayor, whichever title he had at the moment. Um, and so the blacks were sort of united, but you have to remember the, the blacks are split between what would later be thought of as the plantation blacks, the machine guys, mm -hmm. and women, and the reformers, the two or three reformers. So this really isn't a completely cohesive group, but they sort of agree, yes, let's try and put Wilson forward. 
at least let's try it as a trial balloon and see where it goes. Uh, but behind the scenes, um, Donovan, who was the um, mayor's patronage officer is the best phrase for the time. The late mayor's. The late point. Richard J. Right. Daly's patronage boss. And um, the others, uh, the corporation council, all of the inside administrators who had taken over for Daly when he had had his earlier stroke for several months and had run the city, they sort of said, okay, well, we'll get together. And the 11th Ward group, Daly's home base, and really the business elite of Chicago were able to coalesce and say, we want Mike Belandi. Now, so he becomes the Irish candidate even though he's Croatian. Um, or he becomes the 11th Ward candidate or the business community candidate because he's a corporate lawyer and they figure they can get along with him. He, you know, he's been finance committee chair. He already has the key position. Mm -hmm. He was the mayor's alderman in the 11th Ward. So it's like, well, the mayor really meant for Mike Belanda. Of course, the mayor didn't really mean for anybody. He wanted to rule forever. He never had a successor. Um, but they were putting together this, and so they began to have meetings with everyone who had a, any votes to become mayor. So Burke, Berdoliak, um, Frost, um, and Belandic. I don't know whether they ever pulled in people like Pachinsky, maybe. They would meet with this cabal or these official government or whatever you want to think of it, the Donovan set at City Hall. And, you know, they would essentially say, well, okay, if we make Mike Blandick the mayor, then what do we have to give? And Berdoliak was saying, well, I should be the finance committee chairman. And, but by, and Frost is still saying, no, I should really be mayor. And he's beginning to hold press conferences. The city hall forces refused to let Frost have even access to the mayor's office. He has to hold it out in front of the mayor's office mm -hmm. to hold a press conference. So there's a dispute that he's really the acting mayor. Um, and so you, and then of course the black community is up in arms. Why isn't it our turn now? By now Daly has been married and we're a few days afterwards. And this is uh, after Thanksgiving and before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so there's a sort of holiday mix in all of this going on. As these, in a very few days, this is all happening. What's most peculiar is you would think there would be some other way of organizing the city than reverting back to racial ethnic groups. Right. And that's what happened. Particularly across ideological lines. Right. It's, it's, um, it's sure. uh, in a way, it's more primitive. We, Atavistic a, almost. Yeah, it's, it's re regressing back to what is the basic political structure of the city, and it's racial ethnic. <clears throat> plus this overlay of city hall bosses working for the, the Irish, uh, particularly 11th Ward and the business community getting yeah, together. Yeah, now, you, you, you've mentioned the business community a couple of times. I, that, 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 that's the one element that doesn't, doesn't exactly fit in this taxonomy. They want, the business community's you know, got a very clear interest. They want things to go on the same way. They know how the rules are. They know who they have to approach to get a zoning change or get a tax break or whatever. And they don't want anything different than when the mayor was alive because it's worked out for them. They've worked it out over all these 22 years that the mayor's been mayor. So for them, Belandic is the right successor because he's not going to change much. Uh, in fact, when he becomes mayor, he does settle the civil rights lawsuits so the federal money starts flowing again and he does some other things that are actually quite beneficial. But they're also beneficial from the business point of view as well as a general city good.